Welcome to a lesson on multiplying fractions. To multiply two fractions, we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So if we have two fractions in the form of a over b and c over d, the product will have a numerator of a times c and a denominator of b times d. So for one half times one third, the product will have a numerator of one times one and a denominator of two times three, so the product would be one-sixth. However, we do want our product to be in simplest form, so often it's helpful to simplify before we multiply, which we'll look at in just a minute, but to better understand what's happening when we multiply fractions, we can replace the multiplication with the word of. One-half times one-third really means we want one-half of one-third, which is one-sixth. Again, one-half of one-third would be equal to one-sixth. Let's take a look at a model of this problem. We'll first start by modeling the fraction one-half and one-third, as we see here. And then we're going to rotate this first fraction bar horizontally, so it looks like this. Again, if we want one-half of one-third, we're going to divide each of the horizontal parts of the second fraction vertically into two parts, and then take half of them. So again, here we divided the green fraction bar in half. Notice how it makes a total of six pieces. We want half of these two pieces, which gives us one of these pieces. Notice how if we overlay these two fraction models, the overlapping region represents the solution, which would be one-sixth. So this is a nice way to demonstrate what's happening when we're multiplying fractions. Now let's go back and take a look at some more examples. Here we have two-thirds times four-sevenths. Now again, we can just multiply the numerators and denominators, but we do want to try to simplify the fractions before we multiply by looking for common factors between the numerators and denominators. Since two doesn't have any common factors with three or seven, and four doesn't have any common factors with three or seven, we can just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So two times four is equal to eight, and three times seven is equal to 21. This would be our product. Looking at the second example, we have three-eighths times four-ninths. Notice how we do have a common factor of three here between three and nine, and a common factor of four here between four and eight. So we want to simplify this before we multiply. And there's a couple ways of showing this. Since three has one factor of three, this would simplify to a one. And since nine has three factors of three, this would simplify to a three. And since four has one factor of four, this simplifies to one. And since eight has two factors of four, this would simplify to two. Simplifying using this method, the product of the numerators would be one times one, or one, and the product of the denominators would be two times three, which is equal to six. Now, if we find this method of simplifying a little bit challenging, we can always write the numerators and denominators in prime factored form. What I mean by that is, for the fraction three-eighths, well, three is prime, but for the prime factorization of eight, since eight is equal to four times two, and four is equal to two times two, we would have three factors of two, four would be two times two, and the prime factorization of nine is three times three. While this method takes a little bit more work up front, it is nice because you can see all of the common factors between uh, numerators and denominators. Notice here we have a three over a three, a two over a two, and two over two. So all of those simplify to ones, and now we can multiply knowing that our product will be in simplest form. The numerator is going to be one. The denominator is two times three, which is equal to six. So notice how whichever method we use for simplifying before we multiply, the product is the same. Let's take a look at some more examples. Now we have nine sixteenths times four fifteenths. Again, we do have a lot of common factors here. 9 and 15 share a common factor of 3. There are three threes in 9 and five threes in 15. 
4 and 16 share a common factor of 4. There's 1, 4, and 4, and 4, 4 is in 16. So if we simplify using this method, now we can go ahead and multiply. The numerator is going to be 3 times 1, that's 3. The denominator is going to be 4 times 5, that's 20. And we have our product. But again, if we find this method for simplifying a little challenging, we could write everything in prime factored form. I'm going to go ahead and show that again. The prime factorization of 9 would be 3 times 3. The prime factorization for 16, well, 16 is 4 times 4, and each 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 4 factors of 2. Four would be two times two, and 15 would be three times five. And now we can actually see all the common factors between the numerators and denominators. Three over three simplifies to one, two over two simplifies to one, and two over two simplifies to one. And for our product, we'll have a three in the numerator, and the denominator is two times two times five, which is equal to 20. So, of course, the result is the same. For the next example, we have 1636 times 3. So we need this 3 to be in fraction form. So we can go ahead and put this over 1. Let's go ahead and write this as 1636 times 3 over 1. Notice that 3 and 36 share a common factor of 3. There's 1, 3, and 3, and 12, 3's, and 36. But notice that 16 and 12 also share a common factor of 4. There are 4 4s in 16 and 3 4s in 12. So using this form of simplifying, notice how we'd have a numerator of 4 and a denominator of 3, which would be our product. Or again, if we start with 16 over 36 times 3 over 1, the prime factorization of 16 would which we saw above is four factors of two. Well, 36 would be six times six. And six is two times three. So we have two factors of two and two factors of three times three over one. And again, this prime factorization method is a little bit more time consuming, but it is a nice way to see all of the common factors that are gonna to simplify to one. Here we have 3 over 3, 2 over 2, 2 over 2, which leaves us with a numerator of 2 times 2, or 4, and a denominator of 3 times 1, which is equal to 3. Let's take a look at two more examples. Here we have 2 7 squared. Well, if something is squared, that means we're going to have two factors of the base. So we have 2 7 times 2 7. And since both 2 and 7 are prime, we can just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So 2 times 2 is equal to 4, 7 times 7 is equal to 49. Okay, and then for the last example, notice how we have a product of three fractions. And since there are more fractions and a lot of common factors, I'm going to go ahead and just write everything out in prime factored form to make sure we find all the common factors before we multiply. So 5 is prime. 6 is equal to 2 times 3. 3 is prime. 20 is equal to 4 times 5, and 4 is equal to 2 times 2. So we have two factors of 2 and a factor of 5. Well, 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have three factors of 2. 15 is 3 times 5. So now we're looking for any common factor between any numerator and any denominator. So here we have a 5 over a 5, 3 over 3, 2 over 2, and 2 over 2. Here's another 2 over 2. Notice how the numerator is now just a product of 1's, so that would be 1. And the denominator is just 5 times 3, which is equal to 15. So I highly recommend if you have any difficulty simplifying before multiplying, that you write everything out in prime factored form so you can actually see all the common factors between the numerators and denominators. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.